Hey you guys, it's Nathan back with another video. Here we are in Photoscape X and I'm going to be teaching you guys the color tab today in Photoscape X and we're going to be going through all the settings including the mask, including the more setting and of course all this is being done in the most recent version of Photoscape X which is 4.1. If you have not watched my video yet on all the fun features and new things that were added, definitely check that video out. It will be linked down below. Now, I want you guys to remember that when you are in Photoscape X, every tool that you learn helps you to be able to become a better photo editor. And this color tab is often what you see in other photo editing softwares down the line, like Lightroom and even things like Photoshop. But it's important to learn what these terms are and how they work. So right now I've pulled up a uh, kind of an older photo of mine. It's just a photo of my Samsung Galaxy S5. I've noted that this is my favorite phone of all times just because it was so nice, so clean. I used to, uh, this was taken actually in my bedroom back when I was like, what was this? Like back when I was like 18, 19 years old. And I loved the color on my wall and how the light coming in through the window just made this real nice pleasing tone. Nonetheless, you guys, we're gonna be going in this uh, video through the color tab and how it works. So of course, how you get to it is simply going to the color over here, clicking on that. And then you have all these different tools and sliders. So let's, uh, let's begin at the very top and we'll work our way down. So we have original color. So that's kind of just uh, going off of what it's normal, but you can go and select things like black and white, sepia, grayscale, and also you have a checkbox here to select negative color as well. So that, of course, is the polar opposite on the color wheel, on the color spectrum. So like what we see here, you have a white phone, negative, that becomes black or some kind of a gray. You have the skin tones, we negative that, and it becomes more of a blue. So definitely uh, very interesting there. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can, of course, see everything going on. Um, so then you also have other things like grayscale. Uh, you also have black and white, and you have sepia. Um, one thing that's interesting is that when you make those little changes, sometimes you can see different things that you might not have picked up on when you first look at the image. So like if I go back to black and white, you can see over here in the top right-hand corner right here, there is a dark spot and that was actually a, a speck that was uh, or a, uh, some dirt or something that was on the sensor or on the mirror of my DSLR camera at the time. Now sometimes it showed up and it ruined photos and I had to edit it out. Other times it didn't cause a problem at all. Like in this original color it's very hard to see but sometimes when you look around in here you can see parts of images that you're like whoa I didn't notice that before and it can be very helpful. Um, and also, you know, interesting. So next we have down here, auto color. This is just going to try to adjust the colors to what Photoscape X thinks is correct. So you can say medium, you could say high, and you can say low. So if I go to high here, I can click this compare button or this side by side, and I can see um, this uh, kind of circle here. You select it and it shows on your left, the after it's been applied and before. So if I go over here, I can go over here, and you know, sometimes if it's a well lit image, if it's really nice, you don't see too much of a change. But like in this, even as I'm looking really closely at it, I can see that this is more of a warmer tone versus what it was before, which is more of a pale uh, tone, more of like a, a fluorescent uh, white color instead of something that looks uh, like more of a warm tone. So that's what it was kind of going for. It thinks the image is a little bit too uh, uh, not warm enough. So then you have auto level. So this is once again uh, looking at the levels in your image, kind of like that uh, spectral uh, spectral map and this is really interesting because the auto level you go to high you get this the blue totally changes a whole lot more and it actually looks really really nice very dynamic and everything instead of something that looks a whole lot more flat a whole lot more neutral uh there's a lot to see as far as the change there very interesting 
So that's cool. Next we have down here, auto contrast. Contrast can go from to medium or can go to high. So that of course is changing up your contrast and you can mess with that down here with the sliders as well, but this is just the auto quick way to make those changes happen. So then next we have the brightness and on the brightness slider, I'm able to of course brighten up the image, make it look a whole lot um, almost overexposed if you wanted to bring it up too high. And it's something that can be really helpful if you have an image that's just too dark, but definitely something that's, it's nice to be able to see the instant change as you're moving that slider so you can get just right. Um, next you have darken. That's going to be just darkening up the image kind of just as a whole. And that's something that's very helpful, of course, if it's too bright. Deepen, that's going to deepen uh, some of these uh, maybe darker colors that are already dark, but kind of just deepening it more. It also is maybe boosting saturation, different things like that. It's possibly doing multiple things with just one slider. Uh, vibrance is going to help make colors pop. It might make your skin tones uh, look a bit stronger um, instead of pale. Um, nonetheless, it's a fine balance between too much and not enough. Vibrance can also end up looking kind of like a glow effect if you turn it on too high. Clarity. Clarity can be something that can be very helpful, but remember that's sharpening that image. And sometimes if you over sharpen, you can get an undesirable look. But if you zoom in here, like you see the speaker grill down here at the bottom and the galaxy logo, if we turn that down, you can definitely see that, or even just kind of the uh, different things that are um, uh, textures and things that are on my hand. You definitely see that they become a little bit uh, better defined when you turn up that clarity, but you want to be careful not to turn it up too much. Uh, next, we have two checkboxes, which can be very helpful. So you have HDR and you have magic color. Magic color is just kind of like an auto color type thing, but it's going to magically do a lot. And it's just asking Photoscape X, hey, what do you think this photo should look like? Um, as far as how they've built the software. And then the HDR, it's looking at the image and trying to give you the best dynamic range um, and trying to look at how the photo was taken and say, hey, how would it be if it, if, if it had an even better camera on it, if it was an even high quality um, photo, how would it have separated the background and foreground? And how would you make sure that the image didn't get overexposed, things like that. So we have this HDR, we click on that. And in this case, it didn't turn out too great because it helped to balance some of the things on the outside. But then when it came to the near, uh, to where the subject is, there's kind of a shadowing and stuff. So may not the best, but I do like what it did for to the skin tones. That was helpful. Um, you also have uh, protect skin, skin tones. You can check that or leave it unchecked. So that's helpful that they have that as well. Then over here, Magic Color uh, did the same thing, but not as dramatic. Uh, it actually kind of really messed around with my background there that I thought was, you know, looking so nice before. Uh, nonetheless, very helpful. Uh, we have the Lighten Shadows. So that means like um, different uh, shadows made for my hand or different things. Those will become less noticeable if I crank this up. So very good. So uh, so yeah, can be very helpful at certain times if there is a lot of shadows and you want to see what's back there. That can be helpful. Darken shadows, once again, just darkening up those things. Uh, contrast, that's going to be able to make it so the image looks so, so, so strong and so much uh, contrast between maybe the lighter parts and the darker parts of the image. Don't overuse this too much. You can also cut it back if you wanted to make the image look even plainer, uh, but usually lowering the contrast is not what people will do. Usually it's cranking it up. Saturation is just adding more of a pop, more of color, more of that warmth into the image. And it can definitely make your image look very fake if you're uh, punching it too much. Temperature, this is one where you gotta be very careful with these dials because this can change the color temperature of the entire image. So let's say I thought that this image needed to be warmer. I can grab that uh, temperature slider and I can pull it 
to the left and there I can make that image a lot warmer so much to the point where wow that white now looks uh, more almost even to a tan if you pull it too much um, but then you could also slide the other way and you can make it look super pale and it all just depends on what kind of style of an image you're looking for um, I've learned so much that if you're just wanting to get a natural photo a photo that just looks natural to the eye that can be really uh, simple to do but when you go and you make some of those artistic photos those are the ones that so many people that pop out at them that grab them and say wow that's really neat and so many times that's when you decide to give more of a creative element to it and say hey it doesn't have to look exactly like real life like to the eye it's more of what would be cool to make this photo look like so definitely you can mess around with that but you can get that dialed in to where you want to be just in case of your photo came out and you're like wow that was that's a really pale image and you can you know get some of those colors back then you have the tint this one is one that can get kind of weird because like you can make it look purple you can make it look green and different things and you can mess around with diff sliding different things but uh definitely something that can be helpful but uh one thing that's nice is you can always go back and put it back at zero and you know just reset um even down at the bottom of whoopsie even down at the bottom of the image there's a reset button just in case if you got too far off base there uh, but yes yeah, so those are those different sliders and those can be very helpful next we have the more tab in the more tab you have even more um and this is a lot to go through as well but you have once again exposure and that is you know like that brightness as well but exposure that's going to be uh, once again brightening or darkening your image that's going to be completely um doesn't care what part of the image is it's just going to brighten it or darken it uh gamma correction uh wow so uh this is once again something where it is kind of brightening and darkening the image but it's doing it on a gamma uh uh gamma which can be slightly different from exposure definitely uh do up some do some reading up on that if you have any questions on what gamma is i can make a full video on that uh but it is kind of complicated uh brightness so kind of the same thing we saw up here in this top slider then you have blacks this is going to be all the uh dark parts of the image that can either be boosted so the dark becomes brighter or the dark becomes darker so that can be really helpful if you're trying to make an image look like it was maybe taken at night or something like that but being able to build that separation between the light and the dark parts of your image can be really helpful same thing with the whites you can make the light parts of the image lighter and the dark parts of the image darker uh, down here we have the hue which is kind of just like the temperature and the tint as well but uh, yes you can make it so uh, instead of it changing the temperature or the tint of the entire image this hue is shifting the colors in each one kind of like what we saw in the negative uh, where we did the negative it turned the white to black and it turned this uh, the color of my skin to more of a blue where in this case yeah it's doing that same thing it's changing that background to here like a gray tan ish and my hands to a blue but the phone's staying white um and yeah you kind of can just move around the hues and see how that changes also you can change it to where it's like oh i want more red in this image wow that's a lot of red or more a uh, catan uh color and like really if you did this you know it's a really interesting kind of color combination that you end up with getting more of uh that instead of just the color that i had to begin with which was maybe a more neutral simple color you can make it look more dramatic in there uh, next you have magenta and green so you can put that in i think it's really interesting to be able to mess with some of these some look better on different uh images than others but it can be helpful to mess around with if you have an image that where you're like i don't know the direction of how i want to edit this but you can definitely mess around with it we can put a yellow in here and we can put a blue in here i like this blue that's actually really nice i'm favorite color is blue by the way if you didn't know it already you have dodge um this can kind of destroy an image if you put too much of it on uh, but can be useful in certain times i would use it just for parts of images not the whole thing but maybe in certain times you do want to get that in there 
Next you have Burn. Um, Burn is one that's kind of challenging, but really it's uh, really just turning up tons of saturation on the image. It ends up darkening. Like, I don't know. It's something where I usually use these as brushes, not as entire swaths of the entire image. Nonetheless, I'm glad it's there just so you have the options. And then Vivid, which is going to give you, once again, a very stylistic image as well. But all those sliders, you can move and shift them however you want. It can be very helpful. I'm going to um, turn this to less so we can look at the last kind of push button in this color tab, which is the mask. And the mask you can just get to by hitting the M key or, or of course, cl clicking on it. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. And then in the mask, this is one that's super helpful because I was telling you guys before how it is very useful to use some of these uh, effects or some of these sliders only on certain parts of the image. So let me show you how to do that. A mask is simply going to <coughs> allow you to select just certain parts of the image. So I can click in here and I can go and I'm starting to select just the phone. And of course I can zoom in and be super precise. I can also change the brush size and the hardness so I can like really select nice and quickly. But what's awesome here is that I'm able to go in here and just select the phone. I can be really precise. Um, and then if I ever go outside of the lines too much, there is a subtract button. And then I can just use that same brush, but as an eraser to erase out the parts where I go too far. So I can do that just so I'm not bleeding outside of the lines there. And then what's nice is there's a show mask button and that show mask button is going to be able to help me see what's already selected. And then of course I can invert the mask as well, which means let's say I uh, select the entire phone and it looks really great and all that. But let's say, uh, let's say after I have it all selected, I decide, oh wait, instead of me wanting to change the phone and have the effect be applied to just the phone, what if I wanted to select the complete opposite? Well, if that's the case, I can go to, uh, I can go to, let's see, go to invert mask and I hit invert mask and then it goes from, it's saying, hey, there is uh, the phone being selected. I can invert the mask so it's everything else besides the phone. So I think that can be really helpful and that's actually probably what I'm going to do for this. I can still go into the subtract and I can look around and see what needs to be done. Also, it's kind of interesting if you were like trying to be real precise, you can do this to just refine what you're doing. Because uh, sometimes it's easier to cut back instead of cut in or things like that. Uh, but yeah, something that I think it'd be really helpful because the more precise you're going to be with this, the better. And yes, there's a lot of different techniques you can use, but um, having this as a, even though it takes a lot of manual time and effort, it definitely can be helpful. Okay. All right. Well, I'm pretty happy with how that all turned out. So that looks really, really good. All right, so there's the mask. It's everything besides just the phone because I want the phone to stay that nice and white color. And then what I can do is I can go down here to that uh, to that more tab, and I can go over here to this Catan, this Catan red. I can go and throw it more to the Catan, and it's only going to, since I have it selected just on the outside, not the phone, it'll change everything besides the phone. So I can go and slide this. And I can then get it to that color that I want. And that can be super, super helpful. Now, unfortunately, it also changed my hand as well um, when I slide it too far. Um, nonetheless, I could uh, go and select the outside of my hand as well, my hand as well. And that can also uh, mean that that won't be adjusted at all. So you guys, just to wrap this video up real quick, 
Uh, that is how to use mask. Uh, you can go and then say, oh, I want those parts to be higher saturated, or I want the temperature to be this way or that way. But you can make it so it only selects certain parts of the image, like what I showed you there. So you guys, that is the color tab in Photoscape X, and hopefully this was helpful. And if you guys have any questions in the future, feel free to let me know. So thank you guys so much, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.